Welcome back to Crossfire. <clears throat> Our guest so far has been President Clinton via the impersonations of Jim Morris. Jim, the president read the night before Christmas last night at the White House. Have you got any Christmas messages from some of the folks outside of the White House? Um, sure. <laughs> Actually, let me start off. This is, uh, this is my Christmas greeting without the white hair, of course, to the people at home. Oh, come all ye faithful. Hey, where'd everyone go? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little joke there. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, actually, <laughs> actually, he, he last night he was with uh, all these kids Bunch around kids. the white. It was very cute to see. It was the night before Christmas and all through. I just somehow I just can't imagine Richard Nixon when he was president in there with little kids. Uh, it was the night before Christmas when all through the White House not a creature was stirring, not even a mill house. <laughs> <laughs> the stockings were hung by the chimney with care because Davy Eisenhower knew that Santa'd be there. My wife's hair and curlers, a mud pack on her brow. I rolled over to kiss her, but she said, no, not now. <laughs> <laughs> then out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I got up out of bed uh, to see what was the matter and what to my wondering eyes should appear but Air Force One. I saw it perfectly clear. <laughs> and stepping off the plane, I could just barely see, no, not Santa, but my henchmen three. It was a lonely night. I was so glad they came that I whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Haldeman, now Ehrlichman, now Mitchell, just listen, we'll raise hell tonight or my name ain't Nixon. <laughs> and they gave me a present that I began to unwrap. Whatever it is, I thought must be crap. But no, <laughs> no, a tape recorder is just what I wanted. And now I can make any telephone haunted. So I gave them each a candy cane, made them go away because I had a new toy and I wanted to play. So I said testing one two as they flew out of sight. Expletive deleted to all and to all a good night. <laughs> Anybody more contemporary? More contemporary. <laughs> we can do something more contemporary than... Hard to be uh, less contemporary. <laughs> uh, Tom Brokaw, closing his newscast. Deck the hall with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 here, here is a... <laughs> Ted Koppel lighting the Hanukkah candles. Baruch Atah. Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishanu B'Nitzvotah Vitzivanu And I must caution our affiliates, we will be running a lot long <laughs> as we have all eight candles to light tonight. <laughs> Let's see, who else can we... Uh, how about Vice President Al Gore? Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh over the fields we go Laughing all the way, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, uh, John McLaughlin, one of your contemporaries, uh, one of your colleagues. John McLaughlin. Quickly now, issue one. Silent night, holy night, on a scale of zero to ten. Tell me how calm and how bright it will be. Mike the Beatle Kinsley. <laughs> Here's some impressions I get to do once a year. <laughs> there we go. What everyone is waiting for, at least everyone I know is waiting for, is Jim Morris's Newt Gingrich. Can we expect I'm, it anytime I'm soon? I'm working on it uh, very soon. Is I, he hard? Easy? He's, uh, no, he should be easy, but it just takes so much time. I've got to watch the tapes. I've got to watch him every time he's on, and there's only so much I can take of the guy. <laughs> no, I will get him, because he's a very polarizing figure. He's going to be fun. Now, look, if we're going to have... Yeah, just as... Uh, yeah, okay. I, I do have Phil Graham on the way. That'll do. Oh, you want to say? Oh, yeah, please. Okay, I'm still working on it, memorizing. Because it takes a while to do an impression. Uh, here we go. Phil Graham, senator from Texas. I want a tax cut where we're not going to end up paying for with higher interest rates, with higher inflation, with higher unemployment. we got to bring down government spending, bring down entitlements, and bring down our budget deficit. I want to raise productivity, I want to raise consumer confidence, and I want to raise my neck from this 45 degree protrusion. <laughs> You're going to have a ball as the presidential campaign starts. Hey, look what I got here. Good to see you. My buddy? These are my, my old boss. These are my bush. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Barbara and I send our, our regards to you and your lovely and your family. Good to see you. Hey. 
get lost, buddy. <laughs> it still hasn't learned there, but at least now he's in the minority, and I'm glad to see it. Of course, my son, uh, uh, George, my namesake, beat the lady with the, the, the hair, but, <laughs> uh, uh, but the other guy didn't make it, did he? What went wrong but, there? Uh, Jeb, I don't know face the same problem I did. He looked at the polls the day of the, and it said, you're behind a little bit, but I called him up. I said, Jeb, don't look at those opinion polls. They conduct them by asking people about what they think. Now, <laughs> obviously out there, as you well know, there are a lot of people who just don't think, and this is just the group I was sure would come through for my boy. <laughs> or something of that particular nature. I don't know. What did I just say? <laughs> Perfectly well aware of what I said. It's that's what I meant, I have no idea. <laughs> now, 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 Jim, your other famous impression was Ronald Reagan. Have you found, how do you, how do you, what do you do when something happens to someone you do like happened to Reagan this year or it came out that he had Alzheimer's? You have to give up? I'm often asked that question. In fact, someone asked me, uh, what do I do now, you know, with the problem with Alzheimer's? Am I worried about Alzheimer's disease? I said, well, I, I should have probably, if I'm lucky, about 40 years before I have to worry about that. <laughs> but I simply treat the president uh, with a lot more dignity now. And uh, you see, I was willing to take him out of the act, but the audiences want to see because he's a beloved figure and uh, you know if I can set you all at ease I do have my I have my good days of which today is one and I have my bad days but today I feel great and let me tell you that letter I wrote to the American people I wrote that letter back in 1982 <laughs> and we just felt it was to you see I'm just joking you see that's the kind of joke that I can tell now at my own expense because uh, well, don't keep, wait a minute, Mr. President. Since you're here, since we've got you here, Newt Gingrich says he stands on the shoulders of Ronald Reagan. What about that? Oh. <laughs> that must explain why my back has been killing me. <laughs> no, serious. I, I like Newt Gingrich, and I think that his ideas for America... Uh, the contract. The contract with America, or wonderful prayer in the public school. What I could never understand, and I campaigned for prayer in the school, why has God been expelled from the classroom? Well, was he caught cheating on his SATs? I don't think so. God would not cheat. He doesn't have to. He knows all the answers. He doesn't have to cheat. God created volunteerism. People out there like Adam and Eve to do work on the local level, work that federal God shouldn't be required to have to provide. And I think that that's basically uh, uh, where we are today. We have come a long way. Our standard of living today is higher than anywhere in the world. Of course, by our standard of living, I'm talking about Nancy and me. We're doing fine. <laughs> Jim, thanks a lot. Don't go away. We're not going to have just me and John in the last segment. You're going to have right, all Christmas. three of us, and we'll be Merry back at Christmas. Christmas.